So this is a tutorial on session variables and forceful browsing between <clears throat> two people's accounts via mismanaged sessions and session variables. So I went to OWASP's Broken Web Applications VM and found a realistic, intentionally vulnerable application called Wacko Pico. It's a picture sharing service and I created two accounts and we're going to play with those two accounts um, and see if we can't log in as one user and browse the other user's contents via session variables. So I created a little sheet um, and we will log in and fill in these variables and the session token for each user along the way. First one is, oops, test username 30. Okay, so this is what the application looks like. And here are some photos that this user has uploaded. So their username is test username 30. And we'll be using Burp Suite to um, look at the session token and some of the other session variables. So let's find this user's session token. Um, here, I'm looking at um, the latest get request for a user. So I guess this user's user ID is 15. And if you notice, it also displays it up here in the URL. So let's add that to the notes. Um, test username 30 it has a user ID of 15. Now, what this is, is it's a session variable um, that the server uses to keep track of different users and their contents. So let's make note that this is user ID 15. Okay and let's find the session token and we want to be sure it's the session token so we will test it. Um, this looks like something promising. Um, so just to make sure that it is the session token, I'm going to send to repeater and we'll establish that we should get a 200 OK response from this request, simply being repeated. 200 OK, everything's fine. So to test if this PHP session ID is the session token that is in charge of authenticating a particular user, let's mangle it and see if it logs us out or if it's also mishandling sessions. So we should be automatically logged out by submitting a, a faulty session token with this request. Yeah, we didn't get a 200 OK, so we've been logged out. Um, so we've established that this right here is the session ID of the first user. Now, unfortunately, <clears throat> since I made that request, it did automatically log me out, so I'm gonna have to log back in. But first, let's click on some pictures and see what happens. So, this is a desert picture, and if you notice up here, there's a picture ID saying 32. Um, <clears throat> I suppose that each different picture has a different number. This is also called a session variable. So. Um, let's just get a couple. 32 and 33 seem to be pictures that belong to test username 30. <clears throat> so let's just add these. And <clears throat> I guess we'll just take this session token. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so let's 
So let's log into user two. <clears throat> and basically what I'm gonna do is try to, from user two's account, I'm gonna try and view these pictures again. Even though, as you can see, I'm logging out right now as test username 30. So, let's log in. The second account I created is called test username 50. Oops. Let's check out their pictures. Now you notice this user is a different user, so the server keeps track of it by giving it a ID that's different. So let's fill in this information on the sheet. So this is test username 50, and their session, oh, their user ID is 16, as we can see right here. So Let's click around on the, actually, let's get there. Uh, let's ensure that we have a different, we're actually a different user. We have a different session token from this right here. So um, here is the request to view user ID 16's pictures. And it is a different token and we'll copy and paste it just to make sure, just so we can tell who's who in different requests. Okay. Uh, all right, let's click around <coughs> and see. Hmm. All right, so this picture has an ID of 29. So I wonder if we couldn't forcefully browse the other user's photos by taking this number right here and changing it to one of the picture IDs associated with the other user. Say we could change it to 32 or 33 and see if we can view that picture, which we shouldn't be able to because that account was logged out of and now we're in an entirely different session. Um, so just for good measure, this is pick ID 29 associated with this other user. Now let's try 33. Um, if this does work, it's what's known as forceful browsing. Yes, unfortunately it does work. You can see that now we are in back in test username 30s pictures. So the point of this is <clears throat> you should probably keep track of users with some sort of other way, not just with these flimsy little IDs. Now, I just tested this by hand, but Burp actually has a feature where we can take a request like this one, get pictures, view this picture, and we can just increment um, this number by using an intruder sniper attack. And then we could view potentially um, maybe all of the users of Wacko Pico's photos, which would be really bad. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that really quickly. Um, let's say, let's actually go by user ID because that would be even more interesting. Um, so I'm gonna send this get request to intruder and positions. These come automatically highlighted, but I don't care about um, incrementing this. I want to increment this user ID number to enumerate the different users and their associated ID numbers whose accounts I can view. So let's just clear these and re-add where we want to. 
Okay, and payloads, um, payload type is going to be, to increment sequentially, we'll do this. Um, numbers sequential from, let's say, 1 to 30, and step size will be 1. So we're going to try and view any other user's page based upon their user ID. We're forcefully browsing the user ID. So let's start the attack. Okay, so anywhere we see a 200 OK response, there was a user ID with this ID number um, whose photos we could view. Um, there's no user with the ID number three because we got a 404 error not found. However, I mean, we could look at all of these people's pages um, just by forcefully browsing their user ID number. Um, so that's it.